Hello Sensuals! Here are three simple things to improve your sex life and here are the things that I've learned in the past year related to these things and here are the ways I'm also going to apply them from now on. Thing number one is state your intention. This is the most powerful thing that you can do. Whether you do it in your personal life or in your intimate life or just related to your sexuality or any other thing, state your intention. What it is that you want? What is it that you aspire to? What's your dream? What's your wish? Where do you want to get to? The reason this is so powerful is because when you do that and when you do that from a place of confidence and trust and well joy because it's something beautiful that you want to do you're actually drawing to you people who are you know think alike they act alike they want the same things as you do they're on the same path as you are and you can learn from one another you can help one another you can join one another in this area including in your sex life because this is our main focus here now here's how i saw myself you know, improving because of sim this simple thing, stating my intention. Now, I stated publicly that I want to work on sexual development for me as well as for other people that resonate with this. In the past year, I've had 13 clients coming to one-on-one -on -one sessions. I've had 290 participants at events that I did on my own or in collaborations or just as a guest in other communities out there. And I've had audiences of a total of 500 people, live audiences, you know, people that I reached to and I went to with a message in conferences, in TED Talks, in movie festivals or documentary festivals, you name it. My YouTube channel fourfolded actually. My Facebook page is double now, the size it was since last year and uh, the community that I'm growing has also doubled and I've launched some online programs and somebody from my community suggested that I also put them on Udemy and these are just some of the things that I managed to do while you know putting my intention out there and uh, no matter what my reality looked like because it didn't always look so pretty and it wasn't always easy I kept this intention and I kept going and this is how I got to these beautiful things and you know if you want to check them all out there's a link with an entire detailed description about those things and links where you can see everything but the message here is that I stated my intention and it is a crazy intention at least in the place that I am currently residing and um, nonetheless I followed this intention of mine and people came together, resonated, invited me, asked me to, you know, bring myself and my knowledge to them. And this is what I want to encourage you to do as well. And I know that in relationships and in interacting with people, we're usually advised to, you know, not put ourselves out there, not be so obvious, not pour our hearts out on a platter or something like that. But that's also a good advice. So don't go to somebody and pour yourself all out to that person. But stating your desire, your intention, your dream, what you want to achieve, even if it is your sex life, that's still powerful. And it is about you. It's not about other people. It, it puts you in a place where you're so confident that you're sharing your intention. And if you do it in the proper space, so not just, you know, you go somewhere and you step into that place and, hey, I want to fuck as many people as possible, or, hey, I want to have sex on the Eiffel Tower, or whatever else you want to do. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying that in the proper setting, it's okay to state your intention and the people that resonate with that, they feel the same, they think the same, they want the same things. You know they'll they'll come together with you and this is the beautiful thing here and you can also state your intention even if you're in a long-term relationship do that with the full confidence that it is about you and it comes from your authentic powerful self thing number two is uh, know yourself now because we're talking about sexuality yes I am talking about knowing yourself sexually and this is 
done first and foremost through connecting with yourself, including physically. So exploring yourself in various types of touches and bringing various textures to yourself in uh, self-pleasuring yourself in different ways, places, times, settings and so on with different emotional states also. So as kinky as this sounds or as um, you know desperate as it may sound to certain people, knowing yourself is the best way to make yourself a better lover because think about it, you're bringing yourself to this person with the things that you know about yourself. You don't put the responsibility of discovering everything just on that person and you don't put the whole weight on, well, I don't know, why don't you find out? That's so not attractive in a relationship. And you're actually, you're much easier to interact with when you know things about yourself and when you share them with your other person, with your other partner, with your partners. And in a way, think about it, if your partner or partners are doing the same, so they know themselves because they've explored themselves, they've questioned themselves, they've tried various things on their own and they know what resonates with them. So it's easier and it's more beautiful to interact with somebody who knows themselves, who can guide you, who can give you hints, who can show you, who can share with you the things that you want. And this is actually how you build a fertile ground for your relationship to grow. So know yourself is a definite tool out there and everybody who comes to coaching with me actually gets home assignments and one of them is self-pleasuring for the purpose of spotting new things in them and trying new things and I encourage you to do that as well. I do apply this, it's in my training, it's in my personal life and I've seen the results. I can show myself in a relationship knowing, hey, this is what works, this is what doesn't. This is where I'm open to testing and trying and so on. So it's a different kind of interaction. And the third thing is speak about what you like and what you appreciate. Now, most people usually say that, you know, sex is done, it's not talked about. Let's do it, let's get to the action, not talk about it. And other people are somehow reluctant to speak about these things because they fear that they'll lose the connection with the other person. Because what if they like something that the other person doesn't like and they create this gap between them? Well, as counterintuitive as this sounds, I do want you to realize that no long-term relationship or life partnership where sex was included, obviously, was ever built without talking and without putting the time and the effort and the energy to understand and to interact with the other person. Before you say, no, I don't want to speak about these things, I would encourage you to do the contrary. And I would encourage you to also ask yourself, why do I not want to talk about it? What's the problem with talking about it? Just as we speak about vacations and foods and building our ideal home or doing a hobby or building a project that is dear to us, talking about what we like and what we appreciate in sex is equally important and is equally crucial to your, you know, to your relationship, to the success of it. Why not have the faith that the person you are having a relationship with or you want to have a relationship with is open to hearing these things, is open to knowing, is open to understanding and to hearing what it is that you like and what you appreciate. And they're also in the place where they can share what they like and what they appreciate. Because again, this will be the fertile ground upon which both of you will grow and your relationship will grow. Now I'll give you an example of how I understood this in my life because I did the last year. Uh, I'm not the best person to say I love you. I'll talk about sex, I'll talk about you know, money, I'll talk about projects, I'll talk about social change, I'll talk about a lot of things. But when you ask me to say I love you, oh boy, that's a challenge. <laughs> that's a big challenge that's usually, it puts me in a super vulnerable place and um, my past, experiences have shown me that 
people, you know, at a certain point they left. So this was the toughest thing for me to do, open myself, although I was not sure of the setting. Well, I was in a relationship last year where I was actually asked to say I love you and I was being held accountable for it. It's like somebody was keeping score, but you didn't say you love me, but you didn't say you love me. You didn't say today, you didn't say the other day, you didn't say in many days. And this was oh so tough for me. Now I did make efforts in spite of the situation to say I love you. And I gotta say it was like this person said he had to beat it out of me, quote unquote, beat it out of me to say it at the beginning because I wouldn't say it. It was like, no, why inside of me, why would I put myself out there? I mean, other people have left. Why would I say that again? Well, I made the effort and uh, I did speak. I, I got into the habit eventually of speaking this. But then I realized, you know, there are other things that I was saying. There were other ways in which I was saying I love you and those were frequent and one of the most important ways in which I was saying this was whenever I got negative feedback or just you know I saw that something wasn't right I would instantly say how can I be better how can we be better how can we make this better that was the way I was saying I love you. It wasn't the words I love you, it was how can we make this work? And I was open to hearing whatever was coming at me and you know, making things work. And this was having an impact in the relationship, although it was not the I love you, the classical I love you. Now, unfortunately, that relationship didn't work out and um, I had to go through the mess of breaking away from this person. And I did take this with me though, and I did tell this to the other person, you know, from my part, this is the kind of partner that I want to be. The one that comes up and shows up in the relationship, no matter what shit we're talking about or whatever works. And this, the person, the partner that says, how can we make this better? And in, in that I was saying, look, I appreciate this. I want this relationship. So people usually, you know, when they see problems, they just pinpoint or they point their finger to the other person and they say, oh, you're doing this, it's not right, it's whatever. But few people come there with an attitude, okay, how can we fix this? How can we make this better? How can I be better? It's the same thing. Yes, eventually with this kind of um, question, you would get to the part where you would hear things that work well, things that are you know, appreciated by both people, things that we like, things that we, um, things that we can grow, we can develop. So talking about this in a constructive way, no matter what the situation is, is your number three thing to improve your sex life. And uh, how I wanna use this in the future? Well, I definitely wanna keep this um, quality of mine to show up and say, okay, something is screwed up here. How can we make it better? So um, these are just the three things for me now. Um, and I did put myself out here, like I was totally vulnerable in this video. So I do hope that they are useful to you as well. I do hope that you take some time to think about what in the last year that passed, um, not just, you know, New Year's Eve and so on, just the last year from now that passed, and what you learned, how you grew in your intimate life, and see if these three things, so stating your intention, knowing yourself, and talking about what you like and what you appreciate, or creating the setting where we're talking about those things in relationships, see if these things help you, and see if they can bring more growth in your relationships. I also hope that you will check out the link under this video to look out at some of the things that I've done, and, um, I hope to see you in the next year to come with more beautiful um, expansion and growth and relationships and beautiful people new in your life. And yeah, let's all grow together because this is the purpose here. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with whomever you think that may benefit from these things. And I'll see you in other videos to come. Hey,